Hello everyone, my name is Puya and I'm presenting to you our paper accepted at Gecko 2021 conference titled Augmenting High Dimensional Nonlinear Optimization with Conditional GANs. On this paper, I collaborated with Professor Michael Lepec and Samarpreet Pander and we are from the School of Engineering. So let me start with an introduction. Very nonlinear and high dimensional optimization problems pose many challenges to mathematical optimization because these mathematical optimization algorithms cannot effectively explore the solution in space, which is very massive in these problems. We propose generative models to com complement the optimization algorithms in these cases. And to show this approach, we will use a conditional GAN to augment a genetic algorithm for solving a 311 dimensional non-convex multi-objective mixed integer nonlinear programming. The overall approach is that we have this optimization problem that we solve with the optimization algorithm. We get some initial solutions and we train the CGN on them and we get some complementary solutions which we will filter based on whether or not they were they will satisfy the initial constraints of the optimization problems. The final results will be the complementary solutions from the CGN. So this paper has several innovations. First is that uh, this is providing a new method for augmenting mathematical optimization for highly, highly complex optimization problems. This is the first application in the literature of CGANs to multivariate multiple regression, and this is the first direct application of CGANs to mathematical optimization in the literature. As for the methods, let me start with the optimization problem. The problem I'm solving is about designing an optimal four node community, which represents an urban neighborhood. We have four nodes which could be occupied by the central plant or buildings, which are four types, residential, commercial, office, or hospitality buildings. So the optimality is defined in this way. Uh, an optimal neighborhood should result in the least possible construction and operational greenhouse gas emissions, or GHG, cost, or LCC, and highest possible walkability score, or WLK. And the way the optimization algorithms tries to achieve this is by choosing the building type for each of the nodes by choosing the supply technologies for the central plant and by choosing and placing the pipes transfer heating and cooling from the plant to the buildings. We will not explicitly model this uh, pipeline positioning and pipeline selection and because we will need the buildings and the types of them to go about this. So we let the conditional again to figure out how to implicitly model this problem. The inputs that we model with CGAN are the 10 input decision variables, the plant location, the tree building types, the three variables that are related to the CHV engine type and its specifications, and the same for the chiller type. We need one node to be occupied by a building at least. We have at most three nodes that are occupied by the buildings because we need one node for the central plant and the decision variables that should be within the defined ranges. The optimization objectives are minimizing the greenhouse gas emissions, the life cycle costs, and maximizing the walk walk score of this, of this neighborhood. And the uh, optimization Objectives are real valued numbers. Now the conditional GAN. The usual approach to solving this optimization problem, which is highly complex, is using a genetic algorithm or some other black box optimization approach. But the solution in space is too high, uh, it's too high dimensional and it's hard for this uh, optimization approach to explore this. The optimization, the objective function is also non-convex and too nonlinear. So the GA can miss many optimal solutions. So we can use the generative model to find more optimal solutions and to complement the, uh, the performance of the GA. So here's how it's done. We run the GA, we get 66,000 initial solutions for this optimization problems, which are high quality solutions. We train the generative model on this and we, tried it and we let it capture, capture the, the underlying distribution of the sample. And given desired labels, we will let the generative model generate unseen solutions to the optimization problems for this data distribution. Now, each of these solutions is modeled as a regression from 10 integers or the input values, the neighborhood features to three real numbers, which are the sustainability metrics of the neighborhood. The conditional generative adversarial network seems specifically fit for this problem because uh, recently it's been used for many regression problems and it has resulted in uh, good performances. This model has two different networks within it. A generative network, which tries to learn the mapping from random noise to the solutions given the labels and a discriminative discriminator network, which distinguishes fabricated data from actual data. Here you can see the structures of them. These are fully connected networks for the generator feeding the label and the noise. We get the potential 
solution to the optimization problem and we can feed uh, a fabricated or a real data to the discriminator given a label and we'll get the probability of the input being real or fabricated. Now let's get to the experiments. We have run six experiments in this uh, paper. The first three are targeting uh, each of the optimization objectives and is trying and is letting the CGAN to improve each of them individually. And for the last three uh, experiments, we have tried to target all of the optimization objectives at the same time. And also in all of these experiments, we have tried to improve the diversity of the predator front. So let's get to the results and conclusions. The life cycle emissions versus life cycle costs of original versus generated neighborhoods for the best half all experiments are shown in this uh, in this plot. And what you see here are actually the training data. You can see that it's pretty sparse and pretty focused. I can make it parallel with uh, JSON Statum. As you can see, sparse hair, very dense, not very dense. And applying the generative model results in very dense and much more optimal solutions, as you can see here. Compared to CGAN, the blue dots, to the initial solutions or the red crosses. OK, so we ran six experiments. We looked at how much the optimal values of the objective functions among the generated solutions are better than the original ones. And we also looked at the hypervolume, which uh, tries to capture how much more diverse uh, and spread out the solutions are compared to the to a reference set of solutions. For the first three experiments, which we targeted each of the individual objective functions, we, can, we could see that uh, we could get around up to 79% of improvement in the minimum values of, for example, life cycle cost, or 9% for the minimum value of greenhouse gas emission, and the maximum walk score could be increased from 0 to 15. And the hypervolume had some uh, relatively good uh, improvements as well. For the last three experiments, which were targeting all of the objective functions at the same time, we could also get very good improvements, as you can see. Uh, we could get up to 58% improvement in maximum walk score or up to 74% improvement in the minimum life cycle cost and up to 21% improvement in the, worst in the minimum greenhouse gas emissions in worst half all experiment. Unfortunately, for the when using the full data set, we couldn't get very good results uh, in terms of improvements. However, we did a follow up study. And uh, in that study, we saw that for another uh, optimization problem, we could get up to 24% improvements when using the full data set output by the genetic algorithm. So uh, we got to the conclusion that type, uh, tuning the hyperparameters and working a bit more on this model can give you even uh, high uh, improvements and significant improvements on the full data set. All right, so here we propose using generating models to boost mathematical optimization and high dimensional nonlinear uh, optimization problems. We trained a CGAN on different subsets of solutions found by a GA for multi-objective non-convex NYNLP, and we aim to generate more, di more diverse and more optimized solutions. We observed that the CGAN generated solutions with improved optimality and diversity compared to the training set. CGAN has achieved these improvements in less than 3% of the time needed to run the entire original optimization, which is very, very noticeable and very promising. These results speak to the promise of using generative models, specifically CGAN for improving the performance of optimization algorithms like genetic algorithms for high dimensional optimization. And this paper also shows that CGANs, even with simple architectures, which, which we saw here, the fully connected network and small training iterations, as you can see in the paper on low quality solutions can uh, significantly improve the results of complex optimization problems. For the future works, we can suggest that people can look at different problems applying the same method to that to see uh, the different the capacity of this problem uh, of this method on different problems and also using different architectures for the CN, uh, tuning hyperparameters further and then testing uh, on the different ways of combining the nodes and the label. Thank you for your attention and you can find the repository of this research in this link.